This is also funny enough. This is Pope Francis's problem. It is because the he dignitas hangs out with people who write about kissing people. Right. Which is not wrong. I mean, I'd write a book about kissing people if it was a book about my wife. But um, <laughs> but he, I think he does have a brand. I think if we just were able to do a brand consultation with the Vatican, we'd be able to put him on the right path. Because hey, he released the Dignitas, Digni, Infinite Dignity document. And it's all about, it's all good, right? It's all about how people have infinite dignity, but they can't do things that betray that infinite dignity. And uh, and everyone's like, the response to it has been muted compared to some other documents because there's been such a reputation over time of Pope Francis releasing things that are maybe a little bit more on the line. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's just it's funny to think that it's it's me me and PF have a lot of the same problems. I think. Welcome to The Crunch, the only podcast that when you drop an anvil on our head, we turn into like an accordion. Mm-hmm. It's your boy, Ethan. And I'm Patrick. The Crunch is a podcast where Ethan and I, who have been buddies for about six, seven years now, have a have a quick conversation about a topic of the faith, and we also mostly goof off. We think that more people should have conversations like this, and so we're glad that you're here. Thanks for joining yes. us. Ethan. Yeah. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. I've had an interesting uh, 24 hours. Um, yeah. I, Your boy was sick. My boy said. has been sick. The child. Mm-hmm. 16 months old, male, Caucasian. And <laughs> and he, Very. And he, he had a fever. And Ooh. today he's finally doing better. But yesterday, the uh, he was so tired. All he wanted to do was just like lay on either my shoulder or Emma's shoulder. And he just was sad and he was just like this and I was holding him I was trying to put him down for a second nap which he never takes but he just was so tired mm. and so and I'm holding him and we have this thing where sometimes I call him his name's Peter but sometimes I call him Bobo because I think it's a funny name <laughs> to call a child and uh, recently he's been repeating it back to me and he thinks it's really fun to say Bobo yeah and so he was like falling asleep in my arms and I just whispered to him I whispered Bobo and he wakes up he looks at me he goes and then he like fell back asleep it was adorable and i cried for like five minutes because it was just so overwhelming like i love this child so much and he's so, so sick good. but he still says he does a little joke together you know so that was <laughs> he is my that was son. really nice yeah. he's committed to the bit <laughs> i know it's like it's just so cool to be like like when you're when you're dying and you're sick to the ability to like make a quip you know oh, is so oh. important <laughs> yeah it's an, it's an important skill to learn he's gonna go yes. far yeah. You can monetize the skill of humor. We've talked about this. Have can I? Well, if any of you want to, uh, if any of you want to start a podcast and promote it on social media, you should talk to our guy here. Oh boy, he's very good at he's very good at, yeah. Uh, yeah. at that sort of thing. That's true. It'll cost <laughs> you a pretty penny. Except maybe maybe what we could do is you could you could give the money to a charity of your choosing. And I will help mm. you. And then maybe after a while, I'll just say, what if you paid me instead? And then I would have I would have customers and I could build a service-based business that way. Yes, mm. this is good. Never been tried. Never been tried. Only by one man. Um, I We can talk about that another time. I'm yeah, not, yeah, we don't I'm need to talk about that now. But I'm just, I, I, I'm saying my guy here is very funny. Thank you. And it makes sense that that trait has been passed down to your progeny yes also <laughs> we we talked to our neighbors not the ones that live right next to us that we moved here intentionally with but the, the cops ones... no not the cops the um the black house you remember when you lived yes. here down the way mm-hmm. and uh they came over because their kids came over and this was really funny they have like a seven-year-old and a three-year-old and i just put all this landscaping in my backyard like i made this rock pit that's a fire pit mm-hmm. and i did this path and, and they came over, around. they came over and they were like trying to play with Peter. And then before I knew it, they just like had taken our little toy wheelbarrow and our shovel and were just scooping our rocks into the wheelbarrow. And they were like, can we do this? And I was like, I mean, if you put it all back and they just started, <laughs> they were running around and I could see Emma just like slowly getting more and more stressed out because they weren't just scooping rocks. They were also like 
they were coming over. What's this? What is this called? Where'd you get this? Is this your house? Where do you live? Like, it was really funny. Yeah. And But the parents came over. We got to talk to them. I got to, ha- I felt like an adult for like the first time because I live next to, <laughs> I live next to people that are just my age that I've known for a long time, whose kids are, yeah. you know, my godchildren and stuff like this. And then these people come over and they're like in their late thirties, early forties. Yeah. And they're, and we're like talking about the city government you know, and like the, the police chief. And I'm like, what, what is happening to me? I'm like making <laughs> small talk with my neighbors about the government. Am I, is it over? Am I? It is, <laughs> it is funny when you have just kids with people your age, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like you've grown up. It feels right. like, oh yeah, me and this all of my boys do. have yeah. babies now. Right. And right. then you start talking to an adult, like a real adult, <laughs> 401k, so, yeah. Yeah. who has... <laughs> a real job who has like you know a kid your age and also teenagers and you're like right. it was not so long ago that i was one of those and then you go actually it was a really long time ago <laughs> yeah it's it's like, crazy wow. it's weird to go from uh yeah talking to my neighbor who's like my boy we're drinking beer together whatever to like this this guy who comes over wearing like loafers and slacks and i'm like you're just in a different kind of different area kind of- stage of your life yeah. yeah you own a boat you know like that's yeah what's going on um but it was it was really nice i felt i'm like i'm kind of i'm a member of my community you know i'm a i'm a known quantity on the street that i live on yeah um, so it's uh because like the other the people who just moved in across the street they came over they asked me for an extension cord i gave them an extension cord you know it's like i'm wow. i'm i'm dishing out favors to people you know, I'm keeping a catalog so I can call my debts. <laughs> no, <laughs> just kidding. That's not how that works. <laughs> that is not how that works at all. But it's kind of fun, oh, so you know, good. to be in a little little neighborhood that's growing. I will say our neighborhood, despite being an apartment, despite living in a pod. Yeah, uh, our neighborhood is pretty great. I would say mm-hmm. it's in spite of the organization, like the organization of the of the compound is very much conducive to you drive here, you park here, you go to your pod and then you leave in the morning to go to work. And it's, there's like a playground and a dog park next to each other, which by the way, bad. I understand why. Yeah. But don't put a dog park and a, and a playground next to each other. Why? Because dogs and kids, strange they dogs, on, they pee on each other. All they the pee time. on each other. They both like to dig, but they shouldn't do it together. You know, mm-hmm. like it's just, it's a little tough, you know, yeah. but regardless. Uh, but it, in spite of the fact that it's mostly made for single childless adults, this apartment complex, mm-hmm. uh, the, the kids have managed to make it like their kingdom to the point where people drive very, very slowly because it's likely a kid is going to run through the street. And that's, that's a great. good place to live. Yeah. That's a good place to live. And they're all, they all love Leo, they mm. know him. All the adults know my son's name. Yeah, it's Leo's great. Hand, he's given out extension cords to the local dads who need <laughs> who need help. No, it's more like it's more like Leo's riding his little toddle bike, and all of the all of the all of the girls in the neighborhood follow him around. Oh. He follows them around, and then wow. they follow. Him. It's very it's very cute. But then I'm in this situation where I have to watch my son because he's two, and I'm just it's yeah. me and this kid, and I'm surrounded by all these little children that aren't mine. Yeah. And then I'm like, I want to go talk to the adults. That's the yeah. problem with the apartment is that right. it's not like a closed in backyard. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Speaking of dogs, one of the things that we were talking about was the prevalence of coyotes <laughs> in our, uh, yeah. in our, the forest behind our house. And this guy was telling a story about how I, I it must've been him or someone else, but he was like walking his dog. And uh, there were like 10 coyotes that emerged and this is when he lived somewhere else. I'm pretty sure this wasn't here, but there were a bunch of coyotes yeah. that emerged and like attacked this dog. And, uh, and the dog was like a tiny little friggin' like a rat dog, you know? So the dog died. Is that so, what happened? Well, I, I think they, they were able to chase off the coyotes and I, I just looked at him. I said, I would have let them eat the dog. Like I am, <laughs> I am not going to risk getting rabies from a wild coyote for a dog that I can get. I can get a new one at the store. That dog's going to be dead <laughs> in five years. <laughs> Anyway, like I can go, you know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. My kids won't even notice the difference. Exactly. I know? did see, this was a, on a Cody Co video, but someone posted a, like a confession you know, on the off my chest subreddit. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I 
my wife was out of town and I replaced her cat with an identical cat and she has no idea. And honestly, I'm like, that's the, that's the right thing to do. The cat was like scratching and like just a horrible cat. And he just went to the pet store. This is the thing about animals. You can just buy new ones. You know, they they make, there's too many cats. Right. And so he found an identical cat that was better trained, drove to the next town over, donated the, or what, I don't know how you get rid of a cat, but like you give it to the shelter or whatever. Is that a you tax write off? I don't think so. You do execute it functionally. It's you bring it. It to was a, a no kill shelter. Oh sure. <laughs> you don't believe it? <laughs> no, of course not. What are they gonna do with the cats? Yeah. Come on. Come we on, had man. a we had a horse that was dumped back there, in the. <laughs> so have you seen the cat barrels? The cat barrels, barrels? Oil, oil barrels full of cats. That's a that's a that's a. A reduce, reuse, recycle use for oil drums is they put, they put uh, d- uh, the shelters put dead cats in them. Do the cats it's, then you know, cats get are, converted cats into are, oil? Mm-mm, the cats are not then converted to oil. I think they're just put into a landfill. But you know how cats kind of like when they're alive, even they're very liquid. They can kind of fit whatever <laughs> they do. So yeah. it's very easy to store them on mass in a barrel. Yeah. And then I'm sorry, this might be upsetting for some viewers, but <laughs> but that is how they get rid of them in pounds. Yeah. I to anybody who's like super attached to I did the this this is all kind of sparked by a tweet that I saw this morning. It's like m- my whole perspective on pets was changed when I had a child. And oh I th- yeah, I do think there is Definitely. a stark difference in like the how people feel about their pets before children and after children. So before children, this is like the only small thing that you have to take care of, and, and you, it's cute, and it's cute. And then after children, it's like you have all of a sudden a much more important small thing to take care of. And you just like forget about the animal. You're just like, ah, <laughs> he'll get dinner this somehow. Very needy. This all of a right. sudden, this very needy, yeah, uh, Pomeranian this, is not as cute. <laughs> yeah, this creature that barks when my child is sleeping. Now all of a sudden, the the no kill shelter looks like a lot better of an option. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> because it, the dog it is, keeps we, waking up the child. We were considering getting a dog and spending a significant amount of money on getting a dog before we had uh, a, a Leo. Yeah. And uh, I'm very glad that we did not spend that money on that dog right. because, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. It would have uh, it would have been a nightmare to have a baby and a dog in a one-bedroom apartment. Absolutely not. Yeah. Just obscene. But yes, there is definitely a, a, a line in the sand yeah. on in our apartment of the, the people who have dogs and the people who have kids. Mm-hmm. You could just kind of feel the tension. Really, is there a war? Is bru- it's because they put the dog park and the playground so close to each other? It's just yes, it's yes, like it putting, it's like putting the, it's like putting the woke liberal university next to the the based MAGA motorcycle rally. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just asking <laughs> for trouble. Well, it's it's uh the the main issue. My my main issue is that. Yeah. They're constantly updating the dog park and the playground is rough and falling apart. Like that's my main issue. That's, that's like, really funny. But it's easy to update the dog park because it's just grass and like a platform for the dogs to jump on, you know? Yeah. Uh and the other fun thing is that there's a fence for the dog park, but not for not the playground. For the, yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. like I can't just let my son run around. I have to like follow him. Um and so Can you build a is, fence? I don't think I have the permit. Do you need a to permit to build a fence? Here's my permit. I do what I want. Yeah. I, I, I could probably ask and say, hey, could we put a fence or also maybe a fence that is not easy for a two-year-old to open on the dog park? There's a dog park fence where it's just a latch. <laughs> and I was like, my toddler figured that out Instantly. immediately. Right. And a, and a what relatively if put, like, intelligent dog could also figure this out. yeah basically a relatively intelligent dog could figure out how to flip a y latch up tim tim allen once he's been converted into dog mode could get out of this fence (laughs) and that's really what we're trying to prevent here is all of the former humans that have become dogs to stay in one area right yes you don't but i mean you you get this tension on the internet between dog people and kid people it's yeah. almost the fight used to be cat people, dog people. Now the cat people have kind of checked out. They're doing their own thing. They right. they're still they're still sheltering in place from 2020. That's what the cat <laughs> people. <are doing. laughs> oh, 
they're still funny. they're still they're still masked up they're not going outside now it's dog yeah. people versus kid people and you hear like people about like oh your kid is running up and touching my dog like my dog is dangerous hey kill the dog i don't know what to tell you if your dog yeah. is so dangerous that it kills mm -hmm. that it would attack a human being kill it i this is what the book old yeller was about the lesson yeah. of old yeller was not that killing the dog was sad the lesson of old yeller was that you should kill the dog immediately yes. I don't know why we didn't kill our dog. My parents' yeah, dog. We talked it about this on the once. on the bonus <laughs> podcast. We I went into in depth onto uh, into old Yeller on the bonus show, and yeah. uh, and and had a few choice words, but we won't repeat ourselves here. Um. Anyway, so the other news about the the neighbor guy is that he's on the town council now. He's been he was mm. appointed because the mayor died. The, tell me about what you think about this. The mayor of my town died. And his son gets to be the mayor now. And I feel like that doesn't track. That is me. awesome. But it's also kind of, it's kind of cool in like a wow based type of way. Yeah. You know? Like, <laughs> hereditary hereditary <laughs> mayorship. But it's I, also like, man, I wish I could have voted for that. Yeah, right. You know? it is it like feels... he's finishing out his dad's term because he was the lieutenant mayor, deputy mayor? It's probably is something okay. like that yeah yeah but but also <laughs> i'm 90 percent sure that someone should have seen that coming like yeah, yeah i'm assuming the mayor didn't die suddenly i'm assuming no, he, was, the he had would've... been the mayor he had been the mayor since like 1983 like, yeah yeah so, 40 mayor yeah. not a <laughs> 10 term mayor has yeah. his son as this deputy it's like well i can see where this is going right but now uh, my now my neighbor's yeah. on the he's been appointed and uh and he gets sworn in on Tuesday, and I'm thinking about going so that when I tell him, like, hey, buddy, we need a park ASAP, that he actually listens to me. He seems like a nice guy. You know, he's got kids. So I think they're yeah, sympathetic to the park. need for a park. But um, we got to have one. Cross street from the chicken shack. Yeah. I also learned that sales tax is the only way that our municipality generates revenue, which does yes. mean that the, that the chicken shack is the only – is the only thing making money for for this town. Really? <laughs> it's the chicken shag, the the gas station and the subway are the three revenue generators for my town. And wow. so cuz yeah, there's cause no property tax. It. Property tax goes to the county in Oklahoma. Mm. So even though there's all this new building, all these new houses getting bought with the the gov the city doesn't see any of that money, which is crazy. Well, I'm sure I'm sure it comes back to the city in terms of grants from the county. Potentially, but you, that's how but, taxes work. But you'd be surprised. Yeah, misallocations of funds are not uncommon. I wonder. I wonder if we should become. I wonder if we should become a state and local government podcast. Like we should talk about the different ways that municipalities are run, and then encourage all of our listeners to become council men and women. We could do that. Yeah, uh, you could do that on your own. I don't want to do that on my own. I think it'd yeah, be too boring. I think it would be as well. I think here's what I think. I think you and me should become political influencers online. Yes. I think that we should use so in the same way that people start a podcast to like funnel people into their business. Mm -hmm. We should do so like Donald Trump did this, right? He did a reality show and then he leveraged his fame into the presidency, right? Yes. We could do this on a smaller scale where we have some type of podcast and and then we leverage it into real tangible votes, physical and political power that we can then convert into sort of like a like a police state fascist kind of thing that you and some me kind of yeah are in control of. It wouldn't have to be exactly like that, but something pretty cool. What do you yeah. think? I think that would be perfect. See, some people are afraid of of our podcast turning into a cult. But I say this, I say it can't turn into a cult because a cult has to be centered around a charismatic leader, around one charismatic leader. Yeah. And we have two, we so have we're two. good. So it's not a cult. It's not, a, it's it's not a, a cult. Yeah, it's what we have is more a, of like uh, a... It's more of like a, a, a part... Uh, it's more of like a, a... Instead of a triumvirate, it's a biumvirate. Where in order to join, you have to be bisexual. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, excuse me, sir. I'm straight. <laughs> Oh man. So, uh, so that's what's been going on with me. 
you know. Yeah, that's, you're, that's you're, about... start, you're taking over the local government. Taking kids over the local sick. government. Yeah, kids sick. I I have decided, and this yeah. is a sweeping declaration that I'm making on the podcast. I've already I'm begun. Ready. I've yeah. already begun doing this. Um, a while ago, I decided that I was going to swear off fried foods semi permanently, like for the Whoa. For indefinitely. Indefinitely fried food's gone. No. And that's been about a two weeks of that. Yeah. And it's been fine. Like I'm like, okay, yeah, it's actually not that hard to not eat fried foods. How often were you eating fried food? I don't know if it was often, but it's like it's the same it's it's like you don't track it. You don't pay attention. Sure. When I when I was in yeah. when I was in college, I stopped drinking soda and I dropped weight like that. Nice. And I don't I wasn't drinking soda for every meal, mm-hmm. right? But I do notice that the guys who have the bellies, they're the ones drinking, drinking you know, soda. Mountain Dew at, at, you know, at noon. Like, I need a pick-me-up, you know, and they're getting that. They get a Dr. I've been, Pepper. I've been doing this soda pick-me-up. I, I feel soda ashamed. Soda pick-me-up is It's awful. a lie. It's, it's like, so it seems It seems so good. It's 2 o'clock. It spikes your blood sugar. and then I know. Back. it feels And it feels so good when it first hits. You're like, dang. But then you're just like back where you were 20 minutes later. And it just... Yeah. It's it sucks because there's this I at the co working space I work at, there's this there's a fridge and there's this soda that's been in there for like six months. And so I like I know it doesn't belong to anybody, so every once in a while I'll just go I'll just pop a little you know, Dr. Pepper, you know, not a big deal. You know, nobody's missing this. Yeah. And uh-huh. uh and then Emma, she really needed some caffeine, but she can't have the coffee or because it makes her mm-hmm. nauseous. And so we had a little pack of Coke. So I was just grab a little when I work from home, I just grab a little Coke in the afternoon. And it's I think I've got a problem. <laughs> I think I need to, I need, I need help. I need your resolve. One of the, uh, one of, um, before the debate, uh, Gabe's like assistant was, was making fun of him because, uh, he was like, yeah, Gabe drinks the mini Pepsis for portion control and then has five of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man, that's I get funny. that. I, it's like, that's such a, that's, that's, yeah. a, that's a, I understand. But I was like, all right, I'm sort of off fried food. Sure enough, yeah, fried food. Because now, now what I just like, I never, I don't drink soda, and like now my habit is to not get a soda, and then if I want one, I'll get like a little splash of like mm-hmm. Baja Blast at Taco Bell, you know, and like that's a little treat. Um, and so like, what if I, I want, I want my, I want my consumption of fried food to be like that too, and so I'm, I swear mm-hmm. on fried food for a couple weeks. But I also decided I did put a limit on this because this is okay. a hard one. But I, April seventh. I had my birthday party. April eighth is my birthday. April seventh, I had my my birthday pie, and there was there was desserts and stuff. But from mm-hmm. April eighth of this year until April eighth of next year, I will not be consuming refined sugar. Eclipse to eclipse. Eclipse to eclipse. <laughs> I will not be eating refined sugar desserts. Whatever. Refined sugar. Refined sugar is in a lot, and so is I don't know. Refined sugar is it a peptide? I don't know what that means. I've been seeing, but a lot I'm not going to be eating peptides. sugary things. I don't. Refined I don't know. I don't know how strict. So you this can eat natural be. sugar. So you can have like honey, honey. maple syrup, you know, all that type. But of it has thing. to be maple syrup. It can't be like high fructose corn syrupy things. You know, the it, the obvious issue with this is that there's high fructose corn syrup in everything. And so I'm not trying to do the whole 30 thing where I don't yeah. consume any of it because that's just impossible. Right. But we already consume enough added sugar as it is. And so I'm just going to not eat dessert things for a year and see what happens. You're just not going to – no cookies, no cakes, no, no anything? Cookies, no cakes. What if they're yes, homemade I, by my wife and she makes them for you specifically? I will find I will find a way to politely not eat them. <laughs> I'll eat them. <laughs> okay. I'll give them to you. <laughs> Just if anybody wants to make desserts for the podcast, P.O. Box 356, Arcadia, Oklahoma, 73007. The way I Send see it is like way. there's plenty. There's so many special occasions, you know, and like, yeah. it's oh, I'm going to have this little treat for the special occasion. Eventually, the special occasions are like every day, yeah. you know. And so it's like because like I was I'd like come to my, my parents house. My dad's got a bunch of candy. So I like pop a little bit of candy. There's right. no tracking that, you know. Right. And I'm not like right. gaining weight. However, I am maintaining not my weight. Yeah. Yeah. And so like if I stop these things and also fried food, fried food was the big one because I was like, mm-hmm. I need to give this up because I was looking at the Cracker Barrel menu and it was like <laughs> the, the, the fried, the fried, which I love Cracker Barrel, as you guys might know, uh-huh. the fried chicken tenders versus the grilled chicken tenders. It's like 200 calories for the grilled chicken tenders and 800 calories for the fried. It's like just putting them in oil 
quadruples the amount of calories in it for yes. basically the same meal. You're going to eat the yeah. same amount of chicken. Right. It's, it's ridiculous. So yeah, that's what we're doing. We're to see how that goes. Yeah. I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see where, where this takes you because if you do that and you combine it with like a little exercise, a little weightlifting, a little cardio, you could be jacked. Maybe you could just be like a big, strong, strong guy. I'm more concerned about dropping the fat than I am about building muscle. That's, that's fair. But I think you can do, I think you can drop fat. I think you'll be all right. I, I I'm, I'm excited for you and I'm glad that you're doing this without, um, saying that everybody should also do it. Yeah. I don't, I don't think everybody should also do it because I think that I, I, it's more of like a personal thing. It's more mm -hmm. of like, I have consumed more than I needed to. And right. so I should, for a period of time, consume less, less. than I want to. There, there is a, um, <laughs> a Catholic Instagram influencer that drives me up the damn wall. Oh because yeah. Because he's like a fitness guy. You probably know who I'm talking about. I know who you're talking about. I love that guy. I, I <laughs> absolutely despise this guy's content. It, it I makes think me, be friends with him. I think we would get along great in real life. Let me just say this, Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> but I, but the way that he talks about, like he says things like Catholic men need to have big shoulders or Catholic men shouldn't have love handles or whatever. And then he just goes on to give like generic fitness advice. It just is like something about it just really rubs me the wrong way, you know? Cause yeah. like, obviously everybody's in a different scenario, you know, any, like, it feels weird to me to like put arbitrary barriers up of like, this is what a Catholic man is. And this is what a Catholic man yeah. is not, you know? Um, even though like, I agree with the sentiment, like I do think men should be healthy and should be strong and should be fit. And like, I'm trying to live that way, but I don't know. Maybe I'm like, maybe it just bothers I just me. Wanna because... wear, I just want to wear my pants where they're supposed to go. Yes. You know? Maybe it bothers me because he's like saying things in a way that like is just not how I would say them or he's just like stronger than me and that bothers me or like I don't know I don't know what it is but there's like something about it that just really and maybe I do the same thing maybe I I feel like on this yeah. podcast I make declarations about how things should be and uh, you know, I need to watch. I think you definitely. Back, I think but... everybody does that. Yeah. I think he's being purposefully provocative. His big his yeah. big one his big one that that got. Uh, I, I, I might want to talk about this on the dating course. Yeah. It's funny, but he was oh, like, yeah, be funny. if someone knows that you're Catholic in the first five minutes of meeting you, you need to have a hobby. You need to get a hobby. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that he's, he's absolutely right. Everyone got mad at him. Yeah. Like they I should he's... know that we're Christian. Right. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. He's, he's totally right. It's like, you guys, some of you talk only about this and people that aren't Catholic are not interested. Some of you only yeah. want to talk about beeswax candles in the three days of darkness. That's right. all you want to talk about. Like when I talked to, to Loafer's guy, this town councilman, Coyote yep. Man, we didn't talk once about. I don't think they they know that like we know our neighbors from something, you know, like vaguely, and like they know that we're all having lots of kids, <laughs> but I don't think that they like. They probably think you're until important. they until they come into our house, yeah, and they see like the crucifixes and the icons everywhere. They I don't think they're gonna know, and I think that's fine. Like I'm okay with my neighbors going at several months building up a relationship with us before the bomb is dropped that like we probably hold true and dear everything that they despise. And I'm excited for that day to come because it's an opportunity <laughs> for conversation, but he's right. But the way that he said it, I think made just a lot of people really upset because they yes. instantly were like, cause it's attacking the identity. Like people, mm -hmm. Catholicism is so important to people. And when you say like, you shouldn't talk about the thing that's most important to you in your whole life, of course people are going to get upset. This episode of The Crunch is sponsored by Briefcase Marketing. If you work or know people who work or are a Catholic parish, you wow. need to listen to this. I Okay. Hold on. I used to work at a church. You guys know this. Yeah. And uh -huh. website design is very important to me because it can be the difference between getting no phone calls from confused parents or a thousand phone calls from confused parents about when your events are or where forms are located. You know, it's... It's dangerous. I don't, I've never worked in a parish, but I have used many, 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 many parish websites yeah. where I've spent, I, you, you, it's like with a machete in the African jungle trying to find the mass times. <laughs> and I think we've all had that experience. Yeah. And they're and not think, updated. 
they're, and not, they're not updated and they're wrong and you show up and the church is empty and you miss mass for that day and you call your dad and you're like what do i do and he says i don't know this is your fault and it's just a mess <laughs> and you get yourself in a big old mess and what briefcase marketing does they make sure that mess doesn't happen you know nobody they make has sure to the mess go through happen. that yes the catholic church as you know ethan needs beauty mm -hmm in all of its areas in, in the yes. physical word, world, but also in the digital world as well. And they focus I agree. on- That's beauty. why I post pictures of myself online every day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I consume those photos. Indeed. I make sure to consume them every time. But you know, it, it's, hard, it's hard to know exactly what a website, a good website looks like, especially if you're not a pro. It's, yeah. There's a little, there's a je ne sais quoi about, mm. about website design. You know what I mean? Yes. We're like, Something that Deacon Deacon Steve, I know many Deacon Steves, wonderful people, but something that Deacon Steve thinks looks great is actually super hard to yeah. navigate and and yeah. is is obscene. But see see Dan over at Briefcase Marketing, he he knows what looks good and is easily usable by old people and tw toddlers alike. Yes, yes, and it's it, the nice thing is he's got experience. This is not just like a startup guy who doesn't no. know what he's doing. He's worked with small Catholic parishes all the way up to quarter billion dollar companies. So this is a guy who has a ton of experience and knows what he's doing. He's going to be very professional. He's going to set up your website. He's going to help you walk through it. He's going to ma you know, maintain the website for you, do everything that needs to be done so that the people that just want to know when mass is and just want to know where the fish fry is located on the parish grounds can find that information quickly and easily. I want to give you an example of something that he did for a parish Please. in Ohio that he can do for your parish. So if you want this at your parish, just, you know, I'll, I'll give you a call to action at the end. Go to the crunchcast.com slash briefcase actually to, to, to sign your parish up. But uh, the oh. St. John Cantius had this old website that was just awful. It needed, it needed an update. It was one of the most beautiful churches in its area, but no one knew that because the mm -hmm. digital footprint of the parish was, Week. was ugly and so uh so dan came in and he provided a professional photographer to capture the church the Whoa. photos were used across all marketing material including the website he designed cta buttons to get people to sign up for events all throughout the website so people that are thinking about joining the parish could could join and actually become a part of the community and since that launch uh they've received nothing but positive feedback from website visitors the um they had an easier time navigating it. There more more people were able to show up to parish events, and uh, they were able to quickly send updates without those spammy pop ups you see sometimes on websites. So if your if your parish is having that problem, uh, that's that's the problem that Dan can solve. So go to thecrunchcast.com slash briefcase, fill out a quick form, and Dan will get in touch with you. See how he can help you. It might be a big project, small project, whatever you need. Email Dan. Well, not email. Sorry. Go to thecrunchcast.com slash briefcase professional podcaster this guy right here the crunchcast.com slash briefcase briefcase marketing thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the crunch and you that's know? the trick that's the thing that i learned and I, yeah. I think i think we need to learn this it's like your your hot takes you remember back in the day the unpopular opinion bear meme the advice animals unpopular opinion bear yes and it was things like I think workers should be paid a fair wage, you know? And people were like, oh my gosh, that's such an unpopular <laughs> opinion. Crazy. No way. And I was like, no, it's a super popular opinion. What the hell are you talking about? Every, <laughs> everyone, everyone thinks that. No one has ever wanted to not make more money, ever. I know. But people people think, people think that it's unpopular because people think that they say that and mean other people. But people say that and they mean themselves. Yes. And I'm like, I think workers should be paid more. I mean me. And I want to be paid more money. <laughs> yes. Uh, but- regardless i i, I think, think that all i think all women are beautiful unpopular opinion unpopular opinion They're it's got to be an opinion it's got to be opinion an opinion that enough people will disagree with that they'll comment on your post but it can't be yes. such yes. an unpopular opinion that most of the people who see it won't like it and that's the trick and that's what i was yeah. trying to explain to phoebe because she was like you're being too controversial you're making too uh, many people mad i was like no nah. no no nah. ah mm -mm. 50 people are pissed off on this post in the comments, but 700 people have liked it and moved right. on. That's the that's perfect ratio. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah. And so I, I think that, he, I think that this, this gentleman and yeah. you have a lot in common and that in I your know. content creation career, his beginning, yeah. your re beginning, your rebirth in content creation, uh -huh. you guys need to learn this lesson of like, you guys need to make more friends and fewer enemies. <laughs> I'm trying. I know. I feel, I like, know you are. I feel like I'm potentially top five could hang with everybody of all time. 
in yeah. like the Catholic, oh, that's like, true. In like the yeah. Catholic world. Like I don't think there's anybody I could be friends with freaking um what's his name? Uh Taylor Marshall. Uh Nick Fuentes? Taylor yeah. Marshall. Yeah, someone over there. I could be friends with Father James Martin. I I feel like I could I could find things to talk about with both ends of the spectrum. But but I feel like everybody hates me. So and so and so it's like how do I prove <laughs> that I how do I prove that I can hang? Um, and maybe it's just because I'm not jacked is the problem. Like maybe if I just had huge no. biceps, people would listen to me like this guy. <laughs> I don't think that's what it is. I don't think that's what it Are is. Are you sure? It's your, it's a, it's a branding thing. Brand <laughs> yeah. is a brand is a product of association over time. And too many times you've been associated with things that people don't like. Yeah. Too many times. And so you need to be associated with things that people do like. So you gotta, mm-hmm. you gotta like, you gotta be pally pally with KPMG, all right? I, on, I am. But you are in public, but you gotta do that on Twitter where it matters. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. This is also funny enough. This is Pope Francis's problem. It is. Because the he dignitas hangs out with people who write about kissing people. Right. Which is not wrong. I mean, I'd write a book about kissing people if it was a book about my wife. But um <laughs> but he I think he does have a brand I think if we just were able to do a brand consultation with the Vatican, we'd be able to put him on the right path because hey, he released the dignitas digni infinite dignity document, and it's all about it's all good, right? It's all about how people have infinite dignity, but they can't do things that betray that infinite dignity and uh and everyone's like the response to it has been muted compared to some other documents because there's been such a reputation over time of Pope Francis releasing things that are maybe a little bit more on the line. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's funny to think that it's, it's me, me and PF have a lot of the same problems, I think. Yeah. I think you guys are, I think you guys have a lot in common. You guys would have a lot to talk about in Italian. I think we would, I think we'd get along. I think I could say, you know, buongiorno. I would I would Arriba go up to the there, chief. I would go up to the Pope, I'd be like, Salam alaikum and then I would dap him up. <laughs> <laughs> the other the other day I walk I, I walk I walk into my Muslim client's uh it's Ramadan. It was Ramadan back then. Nice. I walk into my Muslim client's office with a bar of chocolate and I'm like, Ramadan Mubarak <laughs> I'm like, Can you eat this? <laughs> That's so funny. I and went he's like, to you a... said that wrong. <laughs> yeah. I picked up a dresser from a Muslim family not too long ago for our bedroom Mm -hmm. because we've lived in this house for almost a year. We still have drastically a little amount of furniture in our rooms. And, uh, and I went to go buy him. I found it on Facebook marketplace. And so I went to go buy it and I went into their home and, uh, I was just, it was, it, it was an interesting experience because most homes I go into are Christian homes or secular homes. I have very rarely been in a Muslim home. Yeah. And that was a, that was an interesting experience because there were the Ramadan, the Ramadan flags were all over the place. Like the art was totally different. It was like a, it was interesting. I was like, wow, it smelled different because like they had like different candles that they were burning specifically for Ramadan. And so I was just like, man, this is a cool. Maybe this is maybe total white boy hours, but I feel like I've growing up. I just didn't have any Muslim friends. I didn't, I never went like, this was a totally, I was like thinking about, I was like, this is, it's crazy. This is the first time ever in my life that I've been to someone's house who's Muslim, which is not because I wouldn't. It's just because I've never met any. And then we talked about my Suzuki, you know, for, for 20 minutes. Cause they used to have the exact same Suzuki as me. So we were, we were palling it up about the Suzuki XL seven, 2003. What a great car. I know. (laughs) all downhill from there i uh yeah no it it was it was it it's sam walking into this this fella's office because he's got like he's got like you know muslim stuff on his wall where we might have like a picture of jesus and it's it's funny it's it's an interesting experience Mm -hmm. and it's it is because the the christian presence is so overwhelmingly the majority in america it's very Mm -hmm. rare that you even like we that we try in like in like polite society we try to be like oh yeah world religions like Muslims and Hindus and Christians and Jews and it's like mm-hmm. three of those four that you mentioned together yeah. make up yeah. like five percent of the population right it's like very very rare that mm-hmm. you meet someone it's like there's evangelicals Catholics non affiliated and basic that's basically it that's most people 
in America. That's most people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quite literally, that's 80% of the population. And if you leave like large population centers like New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, then you don't you don't really see it at all. You know, you like see the most of most of that five percent is concentrated in like a few places. Dearborn, Michigan. Is that where what's in Dearborn, Michigan? Dearborn, Michigan is the Mecca of the West. Is that it's true? The St. Louis of Islam, yeah. Really? The oh, St. Yeah. Louis of Islam is so funny. Thanks. <laughs> they have a they have a an arch, but it's black and they kind of Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. They do that thing. It's they, they instead of the Augustine Institute moving there, it's the uh, it's the Averroes Institute is in. I don't know what Dearborn. that means. Averroes is basically the Muslim Thomas Aquinas. Oh really? Yes. Interesting. Did he is he the one that came up with numbers or was that a different guy? <laughs> Are you thinking of Avogadro and his number? <laughs> is no, that's the guy that came up with espresso and ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Avogadro. Uh, no, Averroes was the Muslim Thomas Aquinas. Okay. He was the the Aristotelian. He was like he liked Aristotle, but he was a Muslim. Okay. And Thomas Aquinas was like Aristotle was a Christian. Averroes was like nope, Aristotle was a Muslim. But anyway, yes, Dearborn, Michigan is a very high percentage of Muslims in America I live in Dearborn, Michigan. Should we go? I don't think so. Do a podcast there on the street? Change my mind. Aver- Averroes was wrong about Aristotle. I don't think they would know what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Rats. <laughs> That's frustrating. Dang it. Did um, you know the Augustine Institute is moving to St. Louis? Is that true? I didn't know that, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't a joke. Rent is too high in D- uh, Denver, I, guess. I suppose. I guess. Interesting. St. Louis. St. Louis is an interesting place. It's kind of a... It is. It's it's like two things that I love. It's like kind of a chess epicenter, and it's also becoming a Catholicism epicenter, which is yeah. very... Like they have a ton but it's of great also, Catholic high schools there and the big basilica and everything. And now the Augustine Institute, they have a seminary there. And they also, they, also they have a giant, they have a giant chess piece there that I took a picture really? in front of. Yes. Oh, it is kind of stinky though. What? St. Louis? Yeah. It's kind of smells bad. No more stinky than anywhere else. That's fair. We got to de-stinkify our American cities. How? Pressure wash. <laughs> great wow mr president your ideas are are so good <laughs> this is why this is why florida doesn't smell because it gets pressure washed every four years or so is the yeah. hurricanes come and it just washes jacksonville and all the gunk goes into the river and you're good you can't it's say that about those people that live in jacksonville they get lost in the river that's so unkind of you <laughs> <laughs> no it's okay i specifically picked a white majority city in florida <laughs> nice nice you're welcome I can't imagine that a hurricane actually makes things smell better. No, it does not. Because you're, it makes you're it's. Like I mean, <laughs> what's the worst smelling section of the supermarket? Fish. So, like, That's you're telling fair. me that the hurricane from the ocean where the fish live is not <laughs> is not just a giant stink swirl traveling <laughs> over the east coast? No, nah, man. The, after a hurricane, it smells amazing. Yeah. Every year, so every year uh, something circulates. It's a picture of the hurricane washed a shark into the streets and it's like uh-huh. a Photoshop picture of a shark in the street. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. love it. And every year yeah, I spread great. it. I love spreading yeah. misinformation. Yes. And but one day I want to see that. I want to see, I want to see a fish. Sometimes you do see fish swimming through streets, which is fun. Um, sometimes you, you skim board in, in on the sidewalk, like my brother, Nick Nevy. <laughs> mm-hmm. We do that when it floods here. One time in Manhattan, it flooded like and all that sewage backed up and people were they had their canoes in the streets and they were just going manhattan kansas people, sewage no not sewage the sewer backed up with what water okay that's good yeah yeah so it was like so much water came down from the rain that it yes. filled up the sewage system and, and the sewage system was like all right i'm done and oh, then the I water see. kept coming and it just I see. And uh, it was great. And tests got canceled. and uh, But I was in an exam while it was happening. So, like, my test got finished. But, like, tests that started after a certain period got canceled. Got canceled. So I didn't really get to play. It in does the, very in rarely water. flood in Florida, which is good because it rains a lot. But yeah. it actually flooded more in Pittsburgh and Newcastle when I lived yeah. there. Because when it rained really hard, the streets just weren't built <laughs> for yeah. that. No, Pittsburgh is built different. It is. Poorly. Yeah. Anyway, well, that's about all I've got. 
for the show yeah, today? I don't really have much. Yeah, I know we said we we're going to talk about a topic, but I, I don't think we really did. We just kind of messed no. around. Have you, did you see that? Did you see that uh, that tweet? We could talk about this at the end because our sure. podcast was basically this. It was yeah. like podcasters get to the point. And I've definitely said that about some oh. podcasts where it's like yeah. an informational podcast. But I I disagree with that sentiment. I think that I like when Katie and John banter on the mm-hmm. Is This for Kids podcast. You know. Yeah, I don't think I like shows that. should be uh, boring. And I think I think if you're an information podcast, that means get to the information. If you're a comedy podcast. Don't worry about it, you know. Just kind of do what you want to do, and uh, not every episode of a podcast is going to be a hitter. By the way, that's the other thing that people—that's what you get. People expect to every just because like it's it's. I think people have higher expectations of on-demand content, right? You think so? Yeah. So like when you're watching TV and you're watching an episode of Bones on the USA Network, you're not like, oh, this is going to be great, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Even though it's like on TV and it took, probably took millions of dollars to like make that thing, yeah, you know, there's no. But if you go to a Netflix show and you click it and you watch it and it's the same quality as Bones, then you're like, this wasn't very good, you know, because it's on demand. And so I think people have that problem is because they went out of their way to click on our show. If it's not the quality they expect, then they're like, ah, this isn't any good because it's the. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's the medium, you know. So we just need what we need is to get our show on radio. And then we won't have to be good at all. <laughs> I will say that people do the 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 banter podcasts do make more people think they can do podcasts. True, true. That I I do I used to think that we were very average podcasters. We are, but then I listened to other podcasts and I go, it's very. I listen to our old podcasts and I go, wow, we've improved a lot. <laughs> <laughs> who am we I did. to judge current yeah. people based That's on how true. we are at where we're at now? It's like, go back to our old episodes and it's, Oh boy. I, I was talking to our good friend, Arlene Spensley, really? who was on the, yeah, was on the podcast like six years ago, seven years ago. Yeah. What's she up to? And I haven't spoken with her since that episode. She's, I don't think she's married, which is cool. Yep. Got married recently. And cool. uh, I was talking to her about, I was talking to her about, uh, about having her back on to like re-interview. Cause like, we interviewed her before we really knew what we were doing. Yeah. So it's not fair to our old guests. I know. We should have back on all of our guests that we had in like 2017 and just like. That'd be fun. Go through the yeah. gauntlet of like, here's all the yeah. people. And then we can finally figure out, did we have more men or women on? Who knows? Who knows? I think we've I think we've been pretty split down the middle in terms of men and yeah. women guests. Yes, I would agree. Um. Yeah. That would be, it would be, I'm imagining like talking to Mark Hart again. Would we have the guy from the Gray Havens on again? I'd have him on again. <laughs> Dog. They're still the good. Blimey Cow Guy. We'd have to blimey pretend that we guy. were a different different podcast to get the Blimey Cow Guy back on. Yeah, I think we'd have to. <laughs> I don't think he remembers. You think people remember shows they were on that didn't matter when they were on them? No. Yeah, I don't think so either. Probably not. <sighs> yeah, I do think. I do think it's it's fun. To I'll have DM him on Inst. Actually, no that that would probably work because we have rebranded our entire show, and I could reach out to him via Instagram, Instagram instead of yeah. Twitter. He would and have no clue. You won't see the previous conversations. Yes, I I think that you and me have a lot going on. And I think the fact that we're still doing this podcast every week is a, is a is a a miracle. <laughs> it, it, it truly is. I'm not trying to do some catching foxes type beat where I like allude to things like that no one will ever know about that are like super difficult and complicated. Patrick and I are just both really busy and like we're trying to like lead our families and trying to build up businesses, and uh, it's really hard. <laughs> there's a reason why people tend to not do multiple businesses at once. Well, there's also a reason that people stop uploading podcasts too. Yeah, is because they it gets too busy. And it's a lower priority. So I'm going to try to read more books, I guess, so I come up with better. It sucks that, like, the only time I have to read, though, I have to spend looking for podcast topics in, like, novels. And uh, No, just read what interests you, and then the podcast will flow. I'm going to watch Dune 2 over and over and over again. And that's just going to be my, the only <laughs> you thing. You really like Dune 2, huh? 
is so good. Now, now that it's released on digital, people are uploading clips of it on YouTube and stuff, and I'm just watching the clips. I'm like, oh, I remember when I saw Oh, that. I remember yeah. when I saw this. It was so yes. good. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, it truly is a miracle. And there's, I would love to talk. It's a little premature to talk about all the things that we've got going on at the moment. If you're on the bonus show, you could hear more about it. But just a weird time in life. If you want to be one of the first people to hear about it, go to uh, the crunchcast.com slash toolkit and you can download our free convince your friends toolkit. It is free. You can pay for it if you want, but that's if you want and it is free and uh, over a thousand people have downloaded it, given us great reviews. Um, Yeah, please go download it. It, You'll enjoy it and then you'll get added to a list of people who will get notified first when we release something related to the toolkit, something bigger than the toolkit. Something bigger than life itself. Yes. Life uh, too. If you like this podcast, join our Discord. Bit.ly slash crunch discord is the place where you can talk to other people who like our show. And you can ask questions if you have a dating question. The we Discord do a dating is great. Show. It's taken on a life of its own, and I love it. It has. It has. Yeah. There's conversations that I don't have to watch. I know. It's great. We've been, I've been saying during Lent, it kind of like dipped, but now like people are, people are back and it's been, mm-hmm. it's been kind of fun. So bit.ly slash crunch discord, join the discord and uh, we'll see you on our Wednesday podcast where we do dating advice, which we're about to record right now. I'm very excited. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, uh, so excited. Patrick, do you have anything else for the people? Tune in next week where Ethan and I start our own town and we are both the mayor. Thank you all for listening. Please pray for us. We will be praying for you and we'll see you all next time.